Speaking on TV late on Thursday, Kanzati said that the cruise missiles currently used by the Iranian naval forces are of subsonic type that can travel near the speed of sound. In the near future, we have on the agenda the production of supersonic missiles, which use turbofan engines to fly several times the speed of sound, he added. Supersonic missiles are capable of traveling at a speed between Mach 2 and Mach 3, which is up to 3,700 km per hour. Mach number is a velocity relative to the speed of sound. The Iranian commander further announced that the naval forces are seeking to launch missiles vertically, noting that in that case, more missiles could be placed on the deck of ships to hit diversified targets. The missile engines used by Iran's navy will definitely undergo changes so that they can withstand higher temperature for a long time. He said, adding that there would also be reforms in refueling and navigation systems. We have achieved a range of 300 kilometers in cruise missiles and we will soon reach more exciting ranges," Kanzardi emphasized. On Thursday, Iran's navy said that it had successfully tested new generation cruise missiles, designed and developed by experts at home, during military drills in the Sea of Oman, which is close to the Strait of Hormuz and the northern Indian Ocean. The missiles destroyed targets at a distance of 280 kilometers, 170 miles. The projectiles which were launched from both trucks and ships hit buoyant targets in the sea. Speaking at the end of the maneuvers, Kanzati stressed that the production of new homegrown missiles will better equip the Islamic Republic to handle any threat against the Islamic establishment and the Iranian people, while strengthening a sense of self-reliance in the Iranian armed forces. Iran says its missiles serve self-defense purposes, stressing that they are mere means of defending the nation against enemy threats. Iranian state TV has aired footage of what it said was a new Revolutionary Guard base, a missile city armed to the teeth with crews and ballistic weapons. Inside the underground facility, the footage broadcast Monday shows what appear to be advanced munitions including scores of missiles lined up along concrete walls. Outside, the base hosts what the guard said is electronic warfare equipment, including radar, monitoring devices and simulation and disruption systems. What we see today is a small section of the great and expansive missile capability of Revolutionary Guard's naval forces, Guards Commander Gen. Hossein Salami said on the broadcast. The state TV broadcast did not disclose the exact location of the base, and its authenticity hasn't been independently verified, but it is believed to be one of several underground facilities that the Islamic Revolutionary Guard has built along the Gulf Coast as tensions with the US, Israel and the region rise. Iran's parading of its missile capabilities fits in with broader efforts to maintain pressure on Washington in response to extensive U.S. sanctions, Torbjörn Soltvet, principal MENA analyst at Verisk Maplecroft, told CNBC on Tuesday. On the nuclear, missile and regional security front, Iranian efforts to place a cost on U.S. sanctions continue apace. Washington and Tehran remain at a standoff as both have indicated a desire to return to the 2015 Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, the Iranian nuclear deal that offered Iran economic relief from sanctions in return for limits to its nuclear program, but each side wants the other to offer concessions first. Iran demands that the U.S. lift sanctions if it is to engage in talks. The Biden team says it won't lift sanctions unless Tehran reverses its breaches of the nuclear deal. Those breaches include upping its uranium enrichment and stockpiling beyond the parameters of the JCPOA, curtailing UN inspector access to its nuclear facilities, and producing uranium metal, which can be used in a nuclear bomb. The US itself initially ditched the nuclear deal under the Trump administration, which then imposed harsh sanctions that have crippled Iran's economy and currency. The missile city raises questions about how the US and Europeans are going to revive the nuclear deal. There's also no doubt that Iran's growing missile capability is a complicating factor for the Biden administration as it explores the possibility of a U.S. return to the JCPOA, Soltvet said.
Iran, lacking the advanced air force of some of its regional neighbors like Israel and the UAE, has instead invested heavily in indigenous missile development and has one of largest missile programs in the region. The IRGC in general places a lot of emphasis on using missiles to project power, said Jeffrey Lewis, director of the East Asian Nonproliferation Program at the Middlebury Institute of International Studies at Monterey. The missile city is indicative of how much importance the IRGC Navy places on conventional missiles in projecting its power into the Gulf. Critics of the 2015 deal, which include the Gulf Arab states, want to see a more comprehensive approach from President Joe Biden that confronts and curtails Iran's missile activity. This presents the Biden team with a dilemma, Soltbit says, incorporating issues such as Iran's ballistic missile program will make a new nuclear deal much more difficult to achieve. But leaving them out will damage relations with key regional security partners. The Army on last year held the large-scale military exercise, which included testing drones and firing cruise missiles. The war game, dubbed Zulfaker 99, kicked off under the command of the Army's Zulfaker base. It has been attended by the ground force, Navy, Air Force, and Air Defense. The exercise covers an area of 2 million square kilometers in the eastern waters of the Strait of Hormuz, Makran Coast, the Sea of Oman and North India Ocean up to 10 degrees north. F-27 and P-3F aircraft as well as reconnaissance drones conducted naval patrols to monitor the drills. Iran's F-4 fighter bombers conducted long-range flights from their bases to attend the war game. They destroyed surface targets using optimized precision strike missiles. Another anti-ship cruise missile, dubbed Nasser, was fired from Iran's Najm missile boat to hit designated target in the southern waters of Iran. Sayari warned Iran's enemies that any strategic mistake would lead to a strong response by Iran that won't be limited to West Asia. Boosting preparedness and operational power of the Navy, air defense and ground force during the joint drills, and countering any trans-regional threat through exercising operational plans, and making sure of their capabilities in decisively countering any possible aggression are among the goals of the drills," he added. The Army forces will practice offense and defense tactics in the drill, Sayori said. Security in West Asia and its vital and strategic waterways should be established through the cooperation of all regional countries and prevention of foreign presence in regional waters," he remarked. Iran regularly conducts drills to maintain defensive readiness and to incorporate technologically new weapons systems.